What's up, people? Landing with LMR.com. That day of the week again, it's Dino Day. Up on the Dino today, we have Scott Hubbard's 1997 Cobra. At the time of this video, y'all may remember Scott Hubbard's 67 GT350 and his 67 Blue Fastback with the 428 swap that we've dyno Well, this is another one of his cool cars. This is his 97 Cobra, which was once a part of the Bob Bondurant School of Driving. Whenever the car was sold off from the school, it was acquired by one owner who actually drove it in a racing series and did win several events. Scott Hubbard acquired the car in 2009 and pretty much drove it as is with the 4.6 liter four valves. Several years would go by. Around the late 2012, early 2013 time frame, the four valve did let go, so Hubbard was searching for an engine. Well, at the time, Ford Racing had just rolled out the Gen 1 Coyote crate engine. And uh, what better car to put that crate engine into than his 97 Cobra Bob Bondurant race car. Well, for those of you that have been around the channel for quite some time, y'all probably remember this car. This is Project Coyote Swap, and it's lived to this day. Scott Hubbard has drove the absolute dog out of it. And a little fun fact for you, still the original engine, and it has 140 hours on the hour meter, uh, and he just changed the spark plugs. Since then, the nine years at the time of this video that the engine has been in the car, uh, it's been great. Uh, Hubbard runs some very fast times at Coda, Texas World Speedway when it was still around, the Hallett Motor Racing Circuit just outside of Tulsa, Oklahoma, and of course, Motorsport Ranch Crescent. As far as modifications go for the car, it's a stock Gen 1 Coyote crate engine, JLT cold air intake, long tube headers, off-road mid-pipe, and a dumped exhaust with a Bassani muffler. It does have an upgraded Tremec 3550 transmission, so our pulls me made in fourth gear, which is the one-to-one -one ratio, aluminum drive shaft, a Torsen T2R differential with a 355 rear gear, and that's a silver SVE 18-inch drift wheel with a 285-35-18 racing slick. Hubbard obviously runs 93 octane fuel in the tank because it's a race car. That's pretty much the rundown of the car. Uh, there's a lot more to talk about, uh, but we're gonna keep it short, sweet, and to the point. So we're gonna get right into the dyno, make a quick trip around the car. Straps tight, lugs torque, I know the drill. Let's roll. All right, folks, let's go ahead and take a look at some numbers. Y'all remember Project Coyote Swap? Y'all know we dynoed it shortly after the engine was put in the car. Well, on another dyno, on a different day, there's so many variables to consider. The car made 447 horsepower at the tire. Well, over these past nine years, Hubbard has always thought that that was a little exaggerated. Well, today on our dyno and in some pretty damn hot conditions, it's humid here in our shop, probably 90 degrees, Car is making 407 horsepower at 6,400 RPM and 393 pound-feet of torque at 4,400 RPM, which if you do all the numbers, you crunch all the numbers, the Gen 1 engine was rated at 420 horsepower, 390 pound-feet of torque. This number that we have here today is a little bit more accurate. Hubbard's upgraded the car. I mean, he's done everything to this car. I mean, it's Hubbard through and through. Splitter, the spoiler, all the things, bigger brakes, front and rear, you name it, Hubbard is always tinkering with something, especially this car, and he's pretty much at the point now where he wants to chase a little more horsepower. Now that he has a more accurate number, he can start to, uh, he can start to chase that horsepower. Hope you guys enjoyed this one today. We're gonna sign off, and as always, I don't know what to do. For all things 79 to present, Mustang and SVT Lightning, keep it right here with the Real Enthusiast, LMR.com.